Assalamu alaikum, everyone, and welcome, welcome back to Medina, Medina TV. Pizza Hut. We gonna eat Pizza Hut. So in today's video, we're going to be answering questions that non-Muslims have. For us. For us. <laughs> Before we get into the video, don't forget to click subscribe. It's right down there. Hello. And turn your bell notifications on because we post every week. Please also catch us on our socials like TikTok and Instagram. You'll see something up here for it. And it's our at the same name, Medina TV. Now let's get into the video. There was uh, a fan who sent a list of questions to us on YouTube and we thought these were great questions. Her name will be up here somewhere. Yeah. And thank you so much thank for these for questions. That. We actually had two people send us a lot of these questions. So we'll actually add their names up here somewhere. First question. You started covering your face at 15 a month after your mom. Was the age you started considered early? This is a very good question. Technically, no. The age I started is not considered early because I'm, I was supposed to be covering myself in terms of my hair or my face, whatever I chose to cover after puberty. I reached puberty at the age of 10, so technically I should have started back then, but I didn't even wear a scarf or anything when I was 15, and that's like, 15 was the age I actually understood why I should be wearing a veil or a headscarf. And that's why I started at that age. So I was a little curious about that because I thought maybe like 12, 13 would be like a standard age and 15 is like, okay, but starting it a little bit late or is that like... It's not late. It just really depends on your journey, right? Everyone has their own spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. You can't force anyone to like cover if they don't want to because then they'd be doing it for the wrong reasons. And there's some women who start wearing it when they're older. Yeah, way well, later. So. Like I have friends who started when they were 25. I have friends that still don't wear it. You know, everyone has their own spiritual journey. Question number two. In Islam, do women cut their hair or leave it long underneath? Furthermore, is there any symbolism to a woman's hair, such as some indigenous people believe their hair is an extension of their soul? So this is my hair. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Like nah. <laughs> nah. No, no, no. So um, I think the fact that uh, indigenous people do that is actually very interesting. I had no idea about I that. I didn't know either. It's cool. um, that's actually very interesting. But no, in Islam, we don't have a concept where our hair is an extension of our... So it's an extension of our soul. We don't have a concept like that. Yeah. Um, in Islam, women can cut their hair or keep it long. It doesn't really matter. It just really depends on their preference. Um, they just shouldn't make their hair in a way where it resembles like a man's hair. Like so, super short. Like super short, yeah. Question number three. Why does he have to have a beard in Islam? Is there any symbolism to a man's hair or facial hair? I don't know about like symbolism per se, but part of it is identity as a Muslim man mm -hmm. to keep a beard. And that stems from like our prophet, peace be upon him, kept a beard. I think all the prophets had beards, right? Yeah. And beard is, is natural, right? It, it naturally grows. And we're supposed to keep like a, it's recommended like a fistful. Mine's yeah. a, I think mine's a little bit shorter than that, but yeah. Uh, yeah. If you can't grow a beard, yeah. then you know it's fine because like that's something that you don't have control over but if you can grow a beard it's recommended that you keep it yeah we get a lot of questions about that and it's not like haram or wrong if you can't grow a beard some people can grow it yeah number four you mentioned your father found out about you found out you began the face covering when everyone else did was that just situational or a father's other male family members not supposed to be part of those conversations that's an interesting question because they yeah. are usually part of that conversation. My my thing was just very situational. My dad just wasn't present when I started. He was in a different province. So uh, I just decided that I would tell him when he was here. <laughs> That's why he found out later. But yeah, like he didn't find out when everyone else did. He kind of found out before everyone else did and then everyone else found out. I think the interesting thing about that is so many people have a misconception that like the father, your dad will force you to cover your face. Your dad didn't even find out right away. Yeah. So. Yes. Like I was not forced. Just letting people know. <laughs> In Christianity, there's branches, traditional Catholic, UCC, Lutheran, non-denominational, Baptist and more. Are there branches of Islam as well? Is there a more traditional way of practicing Islam in a more modern way? So that's a very interesting question too. I would say that in Islam, the branches would be more of school of thoughts 
or um, like the sects that that we have in Islam. So we have the Shia Muslims and then we have the Sunni Muslims and then there are branches that branch off of those two um, and both of them have like their own branches in terms of like their school of thoughts where people actually follow a certain school of thought. Yeah, I think it, it, it is different from Christianity. I can speak for myself as a mm -hmm. former Christian that, you know, um, some people follow more of the Old Testament in Christianity. Some people follow more of the New Testament. Some mm -hmm. people follow both. Some people view those who follow the Old Testament maybe being a little bit more strict. Yeah. Uh, but Islam is not the same way. We all we all follow the Quran. Yeah. So. so the second part of that question was, is there a more traditional way of practicing Islam in a more modern way? So Islam doesn't have a traditional or modern way. It's just uh, because there are so many differences of opinion on certain things. It seems like you know certain people are following something and other people are following something. You do have to go with the times to a certain degree, but at the end of the day, Islam does, doesn't change. It's the same as it was when it came, and it's the same now. Islam has not changed over the years. It's not supposed to change. Um, we were told that the religion of Islam was completed upon us, and that's what we're supposed to be following. Yeah, a lot of people say, you know, Muslims are like in the Stone Age, get with the times, but ultimately <laughs> we believe that like modesty and the way we present ourselves and dress yeah. doesn't necessarily need to change with the times, and yeah. there's no problem with that. And it's not just modesty, even the way we do certain things, Islam is a whole system. It's not just you taking a certain piece of Islam and then, you know, using that. Um, mm -hmm. It's a whole system, and it kind of works together. Like you can't, if you, if you take certain things, like a piece from here, a piece from there, it won't make any sense. Right. <laughs> It'll seem too extreme, right? But because Islam is a way of life, we have to treat it like it's a way of life. We have to live Islam, right? Yep. In Canada, is there a large Islam population? Are most Islamic people from other countries that have moved to Canada? And there's definitely a growing Muslim population, and I found it interesting because living in Pickering, like growing up, um, I didn't see any any Muslims really, but then with time there's actually more Muslims yeah. moving in there now and just going to university 10 minutes away and seeing how many Muslims there were at school I was shocked so there definitely is an increase in that mm -hmm. um, are, are most Islamic people from other countries that have moved to Canada yes yeah there are a lot of like there's so much diversity here yeah you'll see Muslims from everywhere in Toronto Arabic, or like Pakistan, Ontario yeah. or Canada like it just it's very diverse yeah are there any specifically hurtful or otherwise untrue stereotypes or misconceptions that offend or bother you guys more than others? Uh, <laughs> you want to say this? I, oh man, <laughs> there's, there's so many. Just that Muslims are bad people, they're terrorists, they're harmful people. That's one that's just irritating for me. When, a lot, when people say to me, oh, like, they judge converts as people who convert to be in a relationship yeah. is annoying. When people say, oh, you're going to marry four wives. Oh, my God. Li literally, <laughs> you can be non-religious and marry four wives if you really want to. You can find a way to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Islam, the whole four wives thing, like, if you, you have to treat each wife equally, and that's something that not many people are able to do. Yeah. And that's definitely not something I'm interested in, nor is she interested in, so it doesn't apply to us. So one thing that really gets to me is when people think that I'm being forced to yeah. wear my veil Oof. like it bothers me so much because guys i have a brain no one forced me to do this okay i am free to choose what i want to wear and no one in the world could have forced me to do this if i didn't want to do it myself there were people when i grew up that told me oh you know you should have your head covered you should do this you should do that and i was like nah I hate that, blah, 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 blah. I hate it. I hate it so much. But then when I understood why I should be wearing the veil, I started it myself. No one forced me. No one told me to do it. It was my decision. And I think the funny thing is when people come on the comments and then they say, oh, you, you, why are you forcing your wife to do that? You're such a horrible It's so person. funny because I, I met him after I started this. I was Christian when I met her and yeah. I met her wearing that. So yeah. where is it coming into play where I'm forcing that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So exactly. it's her choice. So it's not forced upon me, guys. It was never forced upon me. It never could be forced upon me. And if I ever decided to take it off, that would be my decision. Obviously, that would be like hurtful to some people, but yeah. it would still be my decision. I would never take it off. I don't ever want to take it off, but it would be my decision. 
Yeah, we believe it to be part of the religion, to like the face covering, mm-hmm. but ultimately it, it's the woman's choice what they want to wear. Exactly. Number eight. Is there a reason we don't see as many YouTubers who practice Islam cover their face than YouTubers who don't? Is it a religious or cultural difference? I think one, honestly, one thing that was like we were mentioned a lot before starting is the whole concept of like evil eye. And that is a very real thing. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I, I felt like Islam, like spreading positivity in a way where we're showing Islam is like moder- about moderation, mm-hmm. you know, showing people that were regular people just like them, that's a way that people would be able to connect and relate with us and be like, you know what, Islam is not what I thought it was. You know what I'm saying? If there's no one out there showing that, then people Mm -hmm. won't see what Islam is really about. So we felt like it was kind of our purpose to show that. Yeah, and that's probably why so many Muslims are hesitant in being on YouTube. Um, Most of them don't prefer to be on YouTube, maybe because they just don't want, you know, people to see what they are like. But yeah, there aren't many um, people that wear fa- like veil on YouTube. That's just their preference, not because they're stopped or like being forced not to do it. Uh, I'm sure there are some people, but that's not Islam. I'm sure there are people that are forced not to go on YouTube, but I'm sure that's not Islam. That's not Islam. Um, the, the people who are a bit more modern on YouTube as Muslims, that's their thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a difference of opinion on the face veil. That's why some women wear the scarf alone. And that's why some women wear the veil. Some questions about us. Do you have to go to a women slash Muslim doctor for regular checkups? So <laughs> it's, it's actually very interesting, but um, my doctor is a female doctor. I go to her because like, you know, she's just been my doctor for like my whole life. But if I had to go to a male doctor, I could if I couldn't find a female doctor and I didn't have any options. But like a little bit of a story time, I've had a surgery before guys and I had ascites, which means I had stomach fluid. So I had a fluid buildup in my stomach and that was removed by a male. Um, I also had a surgery where my anesthesia nurse was a male. So he had to give me anesthesia and I I wasn't covered. Like my face was not covered. My body was like exposed. So you know what, like in terms of medical conditions, you are allowed to go to a male doctor just when, like, when a female is not available. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so next question. Uh, is childbirth any different for Muslim women? That's a good question. No, it actually is not. We do have private rooms. Sometimes they give us private rooms. And if there are no private rooms, we still like ask them to like you know put the curtains up so that you know we have some privacy. But isn't women who are non-Muslim have the same thing? Yeah. So I believe so. Like, so it's, it's, not, not, really it's not really much different. Uh, did you face backlash for marrying outside of your culture? Who? Ooh. Which person? I guess both of us. Yeah, you can answer first. I got backlash in general for becoming a Muslim. Uh, I don't know if the, how much the culture... It, it, that was kind of a side thing. Yeah. It was mostly about the religion, so I didn't really get any backlash for it. Uh, for me, I didn't really receive much backlash. I thought it would be worse than it was actually. My, my relatives were very, very accepting, especially after they got to like talk to Mehdi Isa. They, found, they saw what type of person he was, like my dad. He was impressed. My uncle was impressed. So they really liked him. And it didn't really make much of a difference because he was Muslim. And that was the main thing. Religion was the main thing for us. Will your daughters wear full veils too? Will your daughters wear full... Okay, first we don't even have children. So I, I, you know, all I'd say is I think just like any parent, we're going to educate our children on what we believe to be right. Yeah. And so we would share our beliefs with our children and we would strongly encourage Mm -hmm. them to do that. But ultimately it's going to be the the girl's choice. If she's against it, not comfortable, does not want to wear it, Mm -hmm. can't force it, right? Islam is against force, so... Yeah. How do men who are serious about marrying a veiled woman ask to see her face or hair? Um, You'd have to get to a point where you're like in a serious stage of like the courtship process. Mm -hmm. So like if you propose to a girl and at that point you want to request to see her face and everything's like going in a more serious direction, that's when you do it. You wouldn't just casually say, hey, can I see your face? Like there's got to be some sort of direction with that, um, not relationship, but the courtship. Yeah. And just to clarify, most of the time, it's done through the parents. So yep. the boy would ask his parents and request to his parents that, you know, mom, like, I want to see her face. 
So then the mother would request to the in-laws and they would be like, you know, my son wants to see her face. And then she'd send a picture and that's how it would happen. Most of the time, it's kind of like that. And that's the, that's the type of thing I have seen. In our case, it was com- completely different. Yeah, in our case, it was different because my dad actually asked him, do you want to see my daughter's face? And he said, no, I'll, said, I'll wait till the wedding I day. said, no, I'll wait. So my family, unfortunately, wasn't involved in that whole process. No. So, Yeah. Last question. Have you or will you guys go to Pakistan? Inshallah, I'd love to go to Pakistan. I would love to go back to Pakistan, guys. I want to take him. I want to make him like see all of the Pakistani sites. I want to make him try all the Pakistani food. I want him to see the culture, too. It's interesting because, like, you know, we always have guests over over there. It's just, it's a very fun environment. I think to me, like having my family come from India, the culture is pretty similar. Yeah. And it would just probably give me more insight into what like my family members yeah. even experienced in, in that culture. So yeah. kind of overlaps. And like trying your mom's food and everything is oh so good. God. Yeah. Pakistani food is so underrated and trying your mom's food. Underrated? Tried, it's so good, guys. Some people <laughs> I didn't even know. And I try it, I'm like, oh my God. And we eat that all the time because yeah. I love it, right? Yeah. So I want to try real street food. Mm-hmm. And they put their blood, sweat, and tears into it. Ew. <laughs> yeah, I want to try all of it. It tastes good. <laughs> I know, I don't doubt that. I'll try all of it. I want to eat it. Okay, mm. yeah. Anyway, guys, that brings us to the end of this video. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please don't focus on the last part. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you guys have any suggestions for what you want to see us do next, please don't forget to comment. We will be pinning the best comment in our videos from now on. So make sure your comment is good. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Follow us on our socials like TikTok and Instagram. Our name is Medina TV in both places. And please, please turn your bell notifications on because we post every Every week. week. Until next time. Assalamualaikum.